so we have sine, cosine, and tangent, and they are written in terms of fractions, of sides, right? Why don't we define functions that are the reciprocals of those functions? So I'm going to start with the reciprocal of the sine function. We're going to call it the cosecant of theta. There will be a regular secant function. So I'm going to underline code and emphasize that. And the secant function and the cosecant function have the same property that sine and cosine do. If you apply each of them to complementary angles, you get the same number. Okay? So understand that. That's what all pairs of functions and cofunctions do. If you apply one to an angle and apply the other to the complementary angle, you get the same number. That's what they do. So the cosecant of theta, abbreviated C, oops, CSC of theta, is equal to 1 divided by the sine of theta. Because sine of theta is, what was it? It's opposite over hypotenuse. 1 over the sine is hypotenuse over opposite, right? There you go. <clears throat> over opposite. I squeaked a little bit there. So that's the first one. The next one is a similar function. It is the secant of theta. And secant, abbreviated SEC of theta, is equal to 1 over the cosine. So because cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, by definition, 1 over the cosine is the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent side. So these are our next two uh, trig functions. And so we've got one more function to define. All right, so I'm going to put these up here, and then we're going to do our last derivation here. So, OK. So now we've got five trigonometric functions, and we've only got one left to do. And we're going to define it from the tangent. We've done one over the sine, one over the cosine. Now we just have to do one over the tangent. And this is called the cotangent of theta. It is defined to be 1 divided by the tangent of theta, which means we have two more ways of representing that in terms of other trig functions, because tangent is sine over cosine. Cotangent must therefore be cosine over sine. And in terms of the sides of the triangle, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So cotangent, being 1 over tangent, has to be adjacent over opposite. And you'll see that this is actually a unique pairing among all of these trigonometric functions, because not only are these cofunctions, they are reciprocals. That's not the case with the others, right? These are cofunctions, but these are reciprocals. Right? And these are reciprocals, but these are cofunctions. For the, in the case of tangent and cotangent, they are both reciprocals of each other and cofunctions. So if you apply them, and we can see that from we can see that from, from our triangle. If we take the tangent of theta, we get opposite over adjacent. Right? And if we take the cotangent of 90 minus theta, we have to take the adjacent side to that, which is labeled opposite, divided by the opposite side of that, which is labeled adjacent. And opposite over adjacent is the same number as you get when you take the tangent of this angle. Right? But also, they're reciprocals, because the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, but the cotangent of theta is adjacent over opposite. So they are both reciprocals, and they are complementary functions. So that's just cotangent and tangent. The other two don't have that property. So I'm going to, I'm going to put the cotangent here, and I'm just going to write adjacent over opposite. So we have the cotangent of theta equals adjacent over opposite. Okay, so there's two more there's two more things I want you to recall, uh, not recall, but uh, use to remember uh, these things. So we got these definitions here: S O H C A H T O A. So that gives us for the regular trig, these three are the regular ones. That's why they're all on the left together. Uh, these are the ones you're going to see the most of. These three right here. These are a little secondary, but they can be useful, and so we're going to have them, and we're going to learn about them, and especially when we get to derivatives and calculus. So we're going to do our mnemonic here. S O H C A H T O A, and that is so ka toa. Right? So that's so ka toa. That's the definitions here. And there's one for these, it's a little sillier. C H O S H A C A O. Cho sha cow. It's a little silly, but if you like mnemonics, there are your two mnemonics for the regular trig and the reciprocal trig. You can see that it's kind of reciprocal. All the letters are flipped, kind of. But the way that I think is the best way to remember these is how they relate to each other, right? So I'm going to rewrite 
this chart here, but without all the definitions, just the names, just the trig functions. And so I'm going to write them like this. Sine theta, cosine theta, tangent of theta, cosecant of theta, secant of theta, and cotangent of theta. And now, I'm going to box them together in a very particular way. I'm going to put them all in a box. I'm going to put a line like that, and then I'm going to connect this across. And now, we have the nice chart of all the six trigonometric functions related in a very, very particular way. Every function is across from its reciprocal, and it is connected to its co-function. Right? Sine and cosine are in the same box. Cosecant and secant are in the same box. Tangent and cotangent are in the same box. And they are across from their reciprocals. So that explain this, this visualization kind of packs the information in that tangent and cotangent, not only are they co-functions because they're in the same box, well, no, they're in the same box because they're co-functions, and they're across from each other because they're reciprocal functions. So they are the one horizontal box, whereas these two are the two vertical boxes. So if you can, if you can use, remember these two mnemonics to remember the definitions, and then use this picture to remember how they're related to each other by recalling that this is reciprocation, and being in the same box is co-functionality. Right? I just made that word up, but whatever. These are co-functions if they're in the same box. They are reciprocals if they are across from each other. So if you can write this down and remember this graph, this not graph, this, uh, this chart, it's a really great way to remember it. I've never seen this anywhere. It's really simple, so I'm not saying it's, it's genius or anything, but I came up with it, and I think it's a really great way to, to kind of visualize how they fit together, uh, just sort of functionally, as opposed to when we finally get the geometric interpretation that really, really hammers it home. So uh, for the sake of the algebra, um, this is kind of the way you want to think about it. They're across from reciprocals, and they are in the same boxes or connected to their co-functions. Okay, so that's our first lesson in trigonometry. Uh, we've got all of our definitions here. Uh, these are the kind of things I, you you are going to want to commit to memory. Um, I'm not a big person. I'm not a big proponent of trying to just commit things to memory. I think that's a waste of time, and it makes you think that you're just learning something for the test to then throw it away later. Um, here, I'm really trying to get you to learn trigonometry. Right, like really dig it down into the definitions and see where it comes from and, and really get a good feel for the motivation behind all of these ideas. The unfortunate thing is that some things just need to be memorized, right? I need to be able to just talk about stuff without, without having to redefine everything or rederive stuff all the time. I will happily derive things for you that you do not have to remember the derivations of or the proofs of, but I want you to see that these ideas can be come upon through simple math and through just thought, right? And that you can feel like you could have figured it out on your own. These are the definitions with respect to whatever angle you're picking. We're never going to pick that one. Uh, you'll see that we will be taking sines and cosines of right angles, but it's not going to be in the context of this right angle here in our right triangle. It'll be something slightly different, and you'll totally see what I mean. Oops, slammed my, slammed my board. Uh, in the next lesson, uh, we will be talking about special right triangles, and we'll be proving the Pythagorean theorem. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope this was uh, very informative, and I'll see you on the next lesson.